Hello and welcome back to Sheath Math. In today's lesson, you are going to learn about finding probabilities in two-way frequency tables. Now let's take a look at the table below. This is a typical two-way frequency table. Anytime you get one of these, you have to study it to see what exactly they're talking about. Now this particular one, there was a survey done amongst some kids to see which pet was most preferred, a cat or a dog. And they um, divided it up into girls and boys. And so you can see uh, the number 12 there represents out of all of the those surveyed, 12 of them were girls who preferred cats. If you look at the four below it, those were boys that preferred cats. So it's not really that hard to understand what a two-way frequency table is. But there's one thing that I always suggest to my students that they do when they have a frequency table like this. It's always helpful to add up the totals of the columns and the rows, like this. I always suggest putting a total column and a total row so that you can see exactly how many girls and boys there were, how many cat lovers and dog lovers, and then the grand total in the bottom right, which is 40. Okay, this is very important, so I'm always going to tell you to put in your totals, columns, and rows. Now, looking at this same one again, you might get a question like this. What is the probability of a randomly selected person being a girl who preferred a dog? So the first thing we do is we look at the girl's row, okay, and we look at the dog's column, and we find the number that matches those two conditions, nine. Now, it says of all of, of the randomly selected person, that means they're talking about out of all of those um, surveyed, how many were girls that preferred dogs. And so there were nine out of 40. And this is our probability. The chances of you asking a kid uh, what they prefer, a cat or dog, there's a nine out of 40 chance that it's going to be a girl who prefers a dog. And that's our final answer. Now suppose we had this one. What is the probability of a randomly selected person being a boy who preferred a cat? So again, we look at the boy's row and the cat column, and four of those surveyed were boys who preferred cats. And so of the 40 that were surveyed, the probability is a four in 40 chance. But we do want to simplify if we can. So you want to simplify this fraction to its lowest terms, which is 1 out of 10. You have a 1 tenth chance of asking a boy who preferred a cat. All right, let's try a new one. Suppose you had this one, and this one is about a uh, very technical survey about uh, whether men preferred the mountains or the beach for vacation, and whether they had a beard or not. So I always will tell you to put in your total row and column to add up the uh, rows, columns, and the grand total. And the question is, what is the probability of randomly selected man having no beard and preferring the mountains? So we identify the no beard row, the mountains column, and the number that it represents. And so there were eight out of this survey of a total of 72. So we have a probability of 8 out of 72, which simplifies to 1 ninth. So there's a 1 ninth chance that when you survey men, they're going to be no bearded mountain lovers. All right, here is a new one. Um, this is comparing students with phones versus their math grades. So on the left, we have kids who have a phone and no phone. And then the two columns are grades of D or less or C or above. And so the question, well, first we have to put in our totals column and rows. And the question says, what is the probability of a randomly selected student having a phone and getting a D or less? So there's our phone, having a phone row, our D or less column and we have 18 of the surveyed kids. There were 58 
that were surveyed. And so 18 over 58 is our probability, which simplifies to 9 over 29 in its lowest terms. And that is our probability. We have a 9 in 29 chance of asking a kid being a, a phone, having a phone and ha uh, getting a D or less grade. Okay, now I'm going to give you a tough one. Now, this is a new type of frequency uh, because we have uh, two uh, items on the left. We're comparing those that are in the band and those that are not in the band compared to their SAT scores. And we have three different columns for that, 0 to 899, 900 to 1199, and 1200 to 1600. And so, like we always do, we put our totals there. And so here's the question. We have to read it very carefully. What is the probability of a randomly selected student being in the band and having an SAT score below 1,200? Now, being in the band, that's the row, except the second part, having a score below 1,200, there are two columns that contain those. And so what we need to do is we need to combine two different columns, 5 and 21, and see what that probability is out of the total. So we're going to add 5 plus 21 over 89, and our probability is 26 out of 89 chance of being in the band and getting a score below 1,200. Okay? Now here's another tough one. This one's a really tough one. Not because it's that hard, but because you really have to read this question. What is the probability of those students who scored 1,200 to 1,600 being in the band? Now, what's different about this question than all the others is this right here. It doesn't say the probability of all those um, surveyed. It talks about a specific group. Only the 1,200 to 1,600 kids are they talking about. So there's 24 kids that were in the 1,200 to 1,600 range. So this is going to be the total that we're dealing with. Now the band, being in the band, there were 14 out of those 24. Okay, so this is going to be our chances of asking those 1,200 to 1,600 kids if they're in the band or not. It's a 14 out of 24 probability, which simplifies to 7 over 12, that being our final answer. So it's just a little uh, example of a one you might come across in a, in a more advanced type of situation. And there we go. You just learned how to find probabilities in two-way frequency tables. I hope this helped. If you think you need a little bit more help, I always encourage you to rewatch the video, pause it to really grasp the concept. Always look at these two-way frequency tables and study them so you know exactly what they mean. And don't forget your totals, columns, and rows. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.